This is your Vancouver real estate market update for June 2020. And we're getting after it right after this. Hey everyone, I'm Craig Veroni with Remax Masters Realty. I'm your local real estate agent here in Vancouver, BC. In today's video, I'm going to be joined by Karen Gibbard of Gibbard Group Financial. We're going to cover what's happened in the Vancouver real estate market through the month of May, what's coming that could affect that market, and a piece of technology that I'm utilizing to make your home selling and buying experience a smoother one. I shoot a ton of videos about what it's like to live, love, and own here in Vancouver. So if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell as well so you can be notified the moment that I have a new video out. I really want you to be able to stay up to date on all the latest tips and insights into the Vancouver real estate market so that you can become an expert too. So let's dive into it. While there was a 43.7% decrease in the number of sales recorded in May of 2019 to those recorded in May of 2020, there was a 33.9% increase from the sales recorded in April of 2020 to May of 2020. Looking at the broader view, last month's sales were 54.4% below the 10-year May sales average. Metro Vancouver home prices have remained steady since provincial health officials implemented physical distancing requirements in March. The benchmark price for all residential properties in Metro Vancouver today is $1,028,400. This is virtually unchanged from April of 2020, a 1.4% increase over the last three months and a 2.9% increase from the sales recorded in May of 2019. Home sale and listing activity is down compared to typical long-term levels and up compared to the activity we saw in April 2020. Home buyers and sellers are adapting today and becoming more comfortable operating within the physical distancing requirements that are in place in the market. When you're buying or selling a home, knowledge is key. And the Snapstats market reports are a fantastic way to arm yourself with tons of knowledge about your market area. To download the full reports, click on the images below to download either the Metro Vancouver report, Greater Vancouver report, or the Fraser Valley report. If you're watching this on YouTube, down in the description below is a link to a sample report. Go ahead, click on that and review it. And if you think that it's something of value, and trust me, you are going to love these reports, then simply fill out your name and email address to start receiving those reports monthly. I'm really happy to announce that I've added the Fraser Valley report to my repertoire as well. So you can not only get the Greater Vancouver and Metro Vancouver reports, but now the Fraser Valley report as well. Yep, CMHC just announced that effective July 1st, 2020, first time buyers will find buying a home more difficult if they want mortgage insurance through the Canadian Housing and Mortgage Corporation. To speak more in depth on this topic, I have Karen Gibbard from Gibbard Group Financial with us today. Oops, they did it again. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. I think they're trying to make this this report that came out a couple, or not the report, but, but when they came out a couple weeks ago. With their with announcement. This, well, with this terrible announcement saying they believe that the values are going to drop and it was just doom and gloom and nobody supported it. All these other economists came out saying no, 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 no. And now they've come back last week with some rule changes and you kind of question, are they trying to make this happen? They are, I, it looks like they're trying to make it happen, yes. That's um, okay, I have some good news for you when we get into it. Tell us about <laughs> the, the wonderful news from CMHC. There's three main insurance companies in Canada. So let's go there yes. first because yes. there's CMHC, which is government backed. There's Genworth and there's Canada Guarantee. So CMHC and all their wonderful wisdom came out saying that they were going to introduce stricter lending rules. And this would apply to anybody that is a high ratio insured mortgage, so less than 20% down. Um, anybody that's less than 20% down has to go through one of these three insurance companies. And at that time last week, the other two insurance companies had not chimed in as to what they were doing. So it's just CMHC at this point that had come out saying they're going to make three policy changes. So the first one is no borrow down payment. So pre previously you could borrow, you could qualify for the payments on the mortgage plus whatever you borrowed 
you could technically borrow for the down payment. That was scrapped from CMHC. I don't think that that's a bad thing. Well, and you know what? It didn't get a lot of traction, actually. So we do hundreds of mortgages every year, and maybe one would borrow a very small portion um, to assist with the down payment, but I'm not talking people borrowing the entire amount. So this one is really the least impact of all the rule changes. The second one, which gets a little bit more strict, is the um, Beacon score, the credit score for clients. So originally, right now, it's a 600 Beacon score. Well, that's just been increased to 680,000 or 680 Beacon score. It's really going to make sure that clients are keeping on top of all of their consumer debts and making sure they're not getting overloaded. So do I think that that's a good thing? Maybe, but in the credit bureau also just changed how they're looking at credit reports and how they're determining the credit score and also making that a little bit harder. So you've got these two things going against um, people getting in to get the mortgage. And the third one, this is the biggest one. And this was the one that was really, really frustrating on, on Thursday or Friday or whenever the announcement came out, because this is what really affects first time buyers. So right now you're allowed to use a certain portion of your income to qualify for the payments. So that would be the housing payments. So your, your mortgage payment, your taxes, your heat, and your maintenance. You're allowed to have up to 39% of your income as long as you've got a certain credit score to qualify for that. And that's dropped down to 35%. Now 39, 35%, what does that mean? It actually means a lot. It's about a 12% difference in the borrowing power for clients. So if you earned $100,000 as a family income at the old rules, you could qualify for about 483,000. With the new rules, that 35% of using your income, you can only qualify for about 425,000. So that reduces the borrowing power Right, by $58,000, yeah. which may mean the difference of getting into a home or not. Yeah. And Benjamin Tao, who is a CIBC economist, said that if these rules were to come into play with all the insurance companies, that they could estimate that it pushes about 5% of the buyers right out of the market. Wow. Right? Wow. That's so do you want to hear huge. the good news? Yes, I know. I, I, I know the good news, but we're going to share the good news with everyone else. <laughs> so the other two insurance companies, so Genworth and Canada Guarantee came out uh, yesterday saying, we are not going to have the same rules. We are sticking with the old rules, which means you can borrow for your down payment, means that you could have a credit score of 600 and it means that you could have the same qualification ratios so your 39% of your income to help qualify for the mortgage that we've always had or not always had but we've had recently so this is a fantastic reprieve for us but for clients what it means is they are going to have to be really diligent with their lender or their mortgage broker if they get declined by a, a lender that chooses to use CMHC as their default insurer, the main one that they use. So the, the lender might come back saying, you don't qualify because of CMHC. It's prudent for the borrower to know, to ask the lender, can you please go to Canada Guarantee? Can you please go to Genworth? Because they do have different qualification rules. Now, hopefully the lenders on top of it enough to recognize, to just not put it to CMHC anyways. It's just really good to be working with somebody that knows these different rules now across this, these different high ratio insurance companies. Is there a downside to going with, with one of the others? Not to the consumers. The pricing is exactly the same. So from the borrower's perspective, um, they should really be looking at the lender. What is the lender offering as a full package with regards to mortgage pricing, the interest rates, plus the prepayment options and, and the, the overall package. This CMHC new policy policy starts July the 1st. So if you're approved before July the 1st, even if it funds after July the 1st, then you're still on the old rules. As soon as you apply after July 1st and onwards, then it's the new rules. And again, that's only for CMHC. Gen with and Canada guarantee are old rules. Okay, well, thank you for clarifying that because when I read the details the other day, I was under the impression that even if you had a pre-approval but didn't have an accepted offer as of July 1st, the new rules were kicking in. You are correct. So there's oh, a I difference. Am. Yeah, yeah. So there's a difference between a pre-approval approval and a real deal approval. Right. So if you have a real deal approved, so you found a property, you've made it off, you have an accepted offer and the mortgage is approved but it doesn't fund until July 15th, you're fine. You're under the old rules because it's you've been approved as a real deal before July the 1st. Right. If you have a pre-approval and you haven't found a property to make that a real deal, 
yes. until after July 1st, then you have to readjust that pre-approval because you're now tearing it into a real deal effective July the 1st. And so it's new rules. Is there an urgency for buyers to, to try and find, like, I mean, if they're in the market to buy a home, is it worthwhile for them in the next few weeks to get a home under contract? That's a great question because if you're turned down by the other two insurance companies, that's it, right? So if, if, if Genworth and Canada Guarantee say no and you don't fit under CMHC guidelines, that's that's it. There's there's nothing more you can do when you have a, a smaller down payment like that. There's nowhere right. to turn. Those are the right. only alternatives. You know what, the stress test thing, even though it was so painful when it came out, and it, it still is painful, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's part of the reason why Genworth and Canada Guarantee aren't as worried as CMHC is because they feel like they've, they've already tightened up all the lending rules and now they have the stress test rate in place. So they feel like they've got a buffer if they're if the economy doesn't really recover that well. They, they believe they have a big enough safety net to make this happen. And I don't know why CMHC is having uh, going crazy on it, but they've chosen their route. And thank God we have the other um, companies that are choosing to stay where it is. People still want to buy homes. They still need to get into their homes and stop paying rent. So there's always going to be that demand. So these, these new rules that come into place try to put a roadblock in front of it, but it ultimately people are still going to want to buy and get into their own homes. Over the past three months, I've seen an uptick in real estate agents utilizing social media to market their listings, which I think is fantastic. Make sure you're asking the real estate agents whom you're hiring to list and market your homes what the results are of their social media marketing, because there is a huge difference between simply throwing up a post on Facebook or Instagram and knowing how to run effective targeted ads on Facebook and other platforms. I've been a community market leader for years now, and I'll use a recent listing of mine to illustrate the kind of results that you should be looking for from the agents you're hiring to list and market your homes, particularly now that open houses are no longer allowed here in Metro Vancouver because of COVID-19. This is how I do it. I always shoot a coming soon video to promote, build interest and anticipation for the home. I run this video in an ad both on YouTube and Facebook for one week before the listing even hits the MLS. During the week that the coming soon video is running, I then have a cinematic listing video professionally filmed marketing your home like it's an HGTV show. Once the listing goes live on the MLS, I then run this cinematic listing video in an ad both on Facebook and YouTube. So what's the difference between simply posting something on Facebook or even boosting that post versus running a Facebook dark post? Posting something on Facebook limits you to the number of friends you may have and puts you at the mercy of the Facebook algorithm to actually share that post with those friends. Boosting your post allows you to broaden the reach beyond your sphere of friends, but it is not effective enough. A Facebook dark post requires knowledge of how to go into the back end of Facebook and its ads manager in order to run an effective and targeted ad to only those people who may be interested in buying your home. These ads will never be seen by anyone other than whom I've selected to view them. And I can get incredibly specific about who to target. I can select parameters based on age, location, and income level, just to name a few. So let's get back to my latest listing and let me show you my results. In the week prior to the listing hitting the MLS, approximately 3,000 people viewed the coming soon video. Once the listing was live on the MLS and I started running the listing video ads, this is what happened. The video on YouTube was viewed by 4,500 people in two days. The ad on Facebook reached over 20,000 people in just two days, 10,000 of whom watched the video and 4,000 of those people clicked through to my website to view the listing details. The home sold in two days with multiple offers for above asking price. This is the power of not only filming an amazing video for your home, but knowing how to effectively target those people who may be interested in buying it. Hey, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, you're gonna love this playlist here about the neighborhood tours in Vancouver, or check out this one here. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button here. On this channel, you're gonna find everything you need to live, love, and own in Vancouver, so don't forget to subscribe.